So now that you know how to change all of um, the types of rational numbers that we're going to be seeing into decimals, we're going to practice comparing and ordering these rational numbers. So if you're given a list of rational numbers, you want to first try to convert all of the numbers into decimal form. Once they're in decimal form, it'll be really easy to order them by their place value. So we've learned how to change all of our numbers into decimals, so that's going to be our strategy for each of these problems. So looking at our first example, it says place the numbers in order from least to greatest. So make sure that you're starting with your smallest number first. Always be sure to read those directions really carefully. So our first number is 0 0.35 or 35 hundredths. I'm going to put that right over here because it's already in a decimal. Um, our next number is 53%. So remember to change a percent into a decimal. Move your decimal back two spaces to the left and we get 0 0.5. 3 as our decimal form for that number. The next number listed is 3 fifths. So 3 fifths, if you forget, do your long division and that goes into 36 times and 30 minus 30 is 0. So 0 0.6 is our decimal form here. Our next and last number here is 3.5 times 10 to the second. So this is just some scientific notation again. So we bring down 3.5, move our decimal two spaces to the right, and we made the number 350. So notice how I'm stacking these numbers here. My decimal points are lined up. I have all my ones in this column, tens, hundreds, and then I have my tenths and my hundredths, and that's all we really needed to go out to. Remember to help you compare, you can always add zeros to the right of any decimal at the end here. So if that helps you compare, you're more than welcome to do that. First thing we're going to look at is the um, ones place, or the furthest to the left place value. So in this first column, we have 300, 350 right down here. This is very clearly our largest number. So I'm going to write greatest here. Now, when we keep going, the next set three numbers that we need to look at all have a zero in the ones place. So we can cross that out. That's not going to help us compare. Now I'm going to look at my tenths place. Which one of these has my smallest tenths place? That's 0 0.35. So this one will be our lowest. And then our next number that would be um, right after that, we would compare between these two. So looking again at the tenths place, 5 and 6. 5 is a little bit smaller than 6, so that means this would be our second number, and this would be our third. So actually, these numbers were already given to us in least to greatest order. So we end up getting 0 0.35, 0 0.53, 0 0.6, and 350. And that's our list of numbers in order from least to greatest. So go ahead and try the next example right below this on your own. The example says, place the numbers in order from greatest to least. So pay attention, that's different order than what we just did. But your steps are still the same. You want to convert these numbers all into decimal form and then order them using their place value. So go ahead and pause the video and press play when you're ready to check your work. Alright, hopefully you've tried this on your own now. So our first step is change these all into decimal form. So my first number is 2.9%. Remember to change a percent back into a decimal. We go two spaces to the left. We have one empty loop there, so the number that I made was 0 0.029. And I'm going to go ahead and start stacking my numbers over to the right here. My next number is 2 ninths. Remember with our nines, those are always repeating decimals. We're going to get 9 goes into 20 two times, and then when I subtract 18 from that, remember I just get a 2 again. So that 0.2 is going to repeat forever. So that means if I'm going to write it out here, I'm going to write 0 0.2, 2, 2, and I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot here to show that those would keep on going. Our next number is 2.9 times 10 to the negative third. So for scientific notation, we write the number in the front, 2.9, and we're going to move our decimal three spaces to the left this time, and we get 0 0.0029. I'm going to add that to our list over here. And then the last number that is given to us is 9.2, and that's already in decimal form. 
So remember, first check in your furthest to the left column. So if we look in our ones column, we have 0, 0, 0, 9. So 9 is very clearly our greatest number here. So I'm going to put a G next to that, and I'm going to put that down as our biggest number. And then we're going to look at the rest of our numbers. So the next largest, we can't compare in the ones because those are all zeros. So we're going to look in our tens place. We have 0, 2, and 0. So the biggest one there is this one right here. So our next number would be 0 0.2 repeating. Then I just need to compare these, this first number and the third number here. So 0 0.029 and 0 0.0029. I already looked at their tens place. They both have a 0 there, so I can't look at those anymore. Now I have a 2 and a 0. So the bigger one is going to be this first number here, which is 0 0.029 which leaves our lowest number as 0 0.0029. So you can also think about this in terms of money. 9.2 would be $9.20, so that's clearly the greatest value that we have here. This one that we put in second place would be about 22 cents and a little bit more. The one we put in the third spot would be almost three cents, about two cents here. And then our lowest number isn't even a full cent. So obviously this is our greatest number. That would be the money that you would choose out of these four options and the lowest would be that one that's not even a cent. So that's another way to think about it if that helps you. Now we have one more example left to do. And this one says identify each number that is less than 8 elevenths. So the first thing you want to do is figure out, well, what is 8 elevenths in a decimal? We're still going to change this into decimal form. So I'm going to divide that because that's not one of our common fractions that we just know off the top of our head. So 11 can't go into 8. We add our decimal at the top and put a 0. 11 into 80, it goes in there 7 times, so 7 times 11 is 77. When we subtract, we get 3, and then I'm going to bring down a 0. 11 goes into 30 2 times, and 2 times 11 is 22. When I subtract, I get 8. So we're kind of back to where we started, 11 into 8. That means I'm going to be repeating 7 and 2. So this decimal would look something like 0 0.727272. 72. And it's just going to keep repeating that pattern the whole time. So we're going to write that as 0 0.72 with a repeating bar over both of those numbers here. So now that we know what we're comparing our numbers to, we want to look at all the options that are given to us, turn those into decimals, and figure out which ones are less than 0 0.72 repeating. So our first number here is 51%. We're going to change a percent to a decimal. Move your decimal spaces two to the left, and we get 0 0.51. So comparing 0 0.51 to our original number of 0 0.72 repeating, looking in the ones place, they're equal. And then if we look in our tens place, the lower one is 0 0.5. So this one is actually going to be less than the number that we're comparing it to. So we're going to circle that. Looking at the one below it, we have 1.6. That's already in a decimal form. If I want to compare that to 0 0.72, right off the bat, we know that in our ones place, this has a 1 and this has a 0. So 1.6 is definitely going to be greater than 8 11 So we are going to cross that out. Looking at our next fraction, 9 thirteenths. I'm going to do the work for that over here. 9 thirteenths, again, is one of those fractions that we don't really know off the top of our heads. So we're going to have to use some long division here. 13 goes into 96 times. 6 times 13 is 78. When we subtract, we get 12. And then we have 13 into 12, or we can bring down another 0. 13 into 120. And for that, that goes in 9 times. So 9 times 13 gets us 117. And I'll subtract that and get 3. Now, we could keep going because it's not looking like it's going to repeat. However, we are seeing so far we can have enough to compare at this point. So this is about 0 0.69. We don't know completely what it's equal to. But if we want to compare this to 0 0.72, we can start doing that by looking in the ones place. They're both 0. Looking in the tens place, we have 6 and we have 7. So 0 0.69 is just a little bit smaller than that one we started with, so 9 thirteenths will be smaller than 8 elevenths, just by a little bit. So even though we didn't finish here, it was enough for us to answer the question.
Now moving on to 2.5 times 10 to the first. When I'm multiplying by 10 to the first power, I move my decimal one space to the right, and this equals 25. 25 is definitely a lot bigger than 0 0.72 repeating, so that one is not going to be one that we choose here because we're looking for values that are less than that. We have 6.8 times 10 to the second, in our, or 10 to the negative second. So we are moving our decimal two spaces to the left, and we get 0 0.068. And to compare that to our original decimal of 0 0.72 repeating, looking in our ones place, we have zeros, and then looking in our tens place, we have zero and seven. So this number is definitely a lot smaller than our given number. Our last number is 93.9%. Changing our percent to a decimal, we move our decimal two spaces to the left, and we get 0 0.39. 0 0.939, sorry. And then if I compare 0 0.939 to 0 0.72 repeating, looking in my ones place, they're both 0. Looking in my tenths place, we have 9 and we have 7. 9 is bigger than 7, so this will not be less than 8 11 that we started with. So whenever you're given a list or asked to compare multiple um, rational numbers to one another, make sure you change them first into decimal form, and then you can order them using their place value. So use that stacking method as a way to compare those.